You want a jacket? You want to talk some shit? Let's go step outside, motherfucker. I ain't here for that, dog. Whoa, slow it down there, buddy. I mean, this dude thought he signed up for MMA and not Hell's Kitchen. Can someone remind him that Gordon is a black belt? But all that aside, something crazier happened during the family steak night dinner service in season 10. I mean, if you're looking for some of the most insane fights on Hell's Kitchen, then you better binge watch season 10 like I did. But for now, let me bring your focus to this time when Robin brought her fish to the pass even though Christina wasn't on top of the garnish. Meanwhile, Kimmy needed more time for her fillet, but Robin wasn't in the mood to listen. She argued back saying that Kimmy never gave her a heads up in the first place. Robin believed that Kimmy was trying to sabotage her and well, she wasn't entirely wrong. The two of them weren't on the same wavelength. You just told me to run. She just told me to run the fish up. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? However, Christina jumped in and pointed out that it was Robin who screwed up the communication. And true to her words, when Gordon stepped in to inspect the fish that Robin brought up, this is how it turned out. Just touch that fish there. Just touch how dry. That should be f***ed up fresh. Oh man, Gordon has always lashed back at her, but Robin had the nerve to stand up to him. I took it all three minutes ago and I covered it. So, again, all when right. did you cook it? Well, of course, Gordon wasn't having any of it. He chucked the fish into the trash and made a sarcastic remark saying that he would never even feed it to his cat. Well, I think he wasn't being sarcastic. He meant it. But guess what? The tension between Robin and Kimmy continued even after the incident. They simply couldn't get their timings right. Gordon had to literally intervene to get them back on track. What a sad situation. Oh, What's more, he even got the guys over to help them out. But well, Kimmy and Robin showed no signs of stopping. Leave my fish alone. Talk to me, somebody, anybody, what do you need? Never here, listen to me. Dude, who cares? Just cook. But things really hit the roof when they decided to put a cold hanger steak in front of Gordon. And this time, he had to do something about it. Just touch them. Put your hand on top. Put your hand on top. Put your hand on top. I'm pulling it on top. I'm going to get over there. Back at the dorms, Robin was still steaming with anger and couldn't stop ranting about Kimmy. Christina was over and done with all the drama, and she eventually took Kimmy aside to talk about it. I can't even listen to Rod Cam. It's too hard. Dude, you should go up and defend yourself because your girl is throwing you under the bus right now. Now, Kimmy knew, finally, it was time to shut Robin down. I'll tell you what I heard. Come on. I'll tell you exactly Come what on, I heard. tell me then. Come on. However, things quickly escalated into an all-out shouting match between Robin and Kimmy before long. Throw me under the bus. Cool, bitch. It's cool. cool. You call me a bitch today, and you want me to keep my mouth shut? Robin even tried to pin the blame on Christina, but that didn't go well either. Christina fired back, showing why she's a queen in her own right. Did you not just say that her two yes. guys? I did. But wait. The story doesn't end there. The clash between these two hot-headed contestants escalated to a point where it almost turned into an all-out WWE SmackDown. What you do, home fights? Cause true. I know ain't none of my <laughs> damn steaks come back. How many fists came it's back true. to you? See, I know the kitchen can get intense even during the most ordinary services, but we're here for a cooking competition, not a cage match. I mean, who would have thought things would get this heated? And let me tell you, Robin better watch her step because if she pushed Kimmy's buttons any further, she might end up with a knockout punch that could send her straight to the dentist. Close, enemies close. That's why I was keeping you close to me, Kimmy. Oh, ho, ho. there's no excuse for her to have called me a bitch when she was supposed to be my friend. Kimmy may seem like a sweetheart, but mess with her and you'll discover a whole new side that's fierce and fiery. Thankfully, in the nick of time, some brave teammates decided to play the role of peacemakers and intervene to break up the fight. Personally, I thought this would end in an actual showdown, but anyway, crisis averted, thankfully. But things took a dramatic turn in Season 9, Episode 4, when the tension between Monterey and sous chef Scott reached a boiling point. It all started when Monterey encountered an issue. You leave it on the fucking spatula. But instead of trying to fix it, he seemed unwilling to take responsibility. This clearly didn't sit well with Scott, who was ready to unleash his frustration. Scott outrightly told Monterey that all he needed to do was keep the fish on the spatula, emphasizing that it was a simple task. However, Monterey had a different mindset and didn't seem inclined to listen or cooperate. Why? It's nothing I can do. It fell apart. There is something you can do because you should be fucking responsible enough. As the situation escalated, things spiraled out of control in record time. Monterey started talking back to Scott, seemingly unfazed by the authority or the seriousness of the situation. But Scott wasn't about to let him disrespect him or the kitchen hierarchy. I have Bullshit. a on it. Shut up! 
and Monterey has decided to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with sous chef Scott. Scott decided to unleash his anger and asserted his authority about as forcefully as he could. I can only imagine the shock everyone was feeling as the two clashed. In fact, who would have thought that Scott would have resorted to physically confronting Monterey? But hold on, because it seems like the drama didn't stop there. The argument escalated further, reaching a point where both Monterey and Scott dropped the F-bomb. Fuck you! Well, fuck you too then! Clearly, the tension between them had reached its peak, and the exchange soon became far from friendly. Now, let's get into more details of what happened during that intense moment in episode 4 of season 12. The dinner hustle was in full swing, and the tensions were running high between the red and blue team. The red team managed to complete all their tickets, but the blue team continuously struggled with their dishes. It was becoming clear that they needed some extra help. Enter the women who were called in to lend a hand to the boy. I want all of you now to go into the blue team and get on every section and help them get out nine tables. Let's go. It's not uncommon for teams to support each other in cooking competition, but it seems that Jason had a hard time accepting assistance from a female contestant. The dude probably lived in the Stone Age. Anyway, Sandra offered her advice to Jason about his salmon needing a few more minutes. Instead of appreciating her help, Jason became defensive. Look, we know what we're doing here. I'm don't, not saying you don't. Well, you don't told me to come here. Don't argue I know, with me. But you're Checking. The confrontation escalated quickly with harsh words exchanged being thrown about between them. Get out of here! Don't push me with an ice. Right, right, right right he seemed to have this belief that a woman helping him clean his mess was somehow beneath him. I mean, the level of regressive mindset at this point was repelling. I know it's not a fire yet, you dumb What? It's not a fire! It's not a fire yet! At one point, I was genuinely worried that Sandra might lash out physically, given Jason's disrespectful attitude. It's a relief that it didn't come to that, though I do wonder if Sandra's eardrums were affected by the intensity of the argument. Well, of course, Gordon couldn't let Jason off the hook for his behavior. You may not f***ing like it, but it's my f***ing choice. So, take it. Shut the f up yes, sir. and put your head down. Yes, sir. Despite Jason's attempts to apologize and make amends, Gordon reminded him that he had asked Sandra to work with him and his attitude was unwarranted. It's a valuable lesson that respect and professionalism should be maintained, regardless of personal preferences or biases. In the end, Gordon sent Jason and Sandra back to their station, urging them to keep the show going. And to their credit, they managed to put their differences aside and work together to complete the service. Hopefully, this experience taught Jason the importance of treating everyone with dignity and equality. But in the next episode, tensions rose when Jean-Philippe, the head honcho waiter, had a confrontation with a contestant. Van Hurd, feeling confident in his skills, wanted to serve the shrimp scampi right at the table during dinner service. However, Jean-Philippe stepped in and tried to give him some advice to help him shine. Listen, if you look at what I'm me. working. Yeah, listen, I'm gonna give you some I'm in action here. But Van didn't take kindly to the interference. He acted like he was on Gordon's level and disregarded Gene's position. This didn't go unnoticed for long, as Gordon caught wind of their spat and decided to do something about it. In a surprising twist, Gordon actually strolled out into the dining room to address the situation. But keep it cool in front of these customers, and you keep it cool. Is that clear? Table 20. Okay, yes, sir. let's go. Can you just listen to me? No! But the real shock came when Jean-Philippe caught Van red-handed, rolling his car over to the wrong table. And guess what happened next? Oh no. Van! Come here! I'm gonna go get yelled at right now. Jean Philippe, at his wits' end, felt compelled to complain to Gordon about Van's mistake. Can you blame him? If he hadn't spoken up, Van might have continued with his nonchalant attitude, and who knows what consequences it could have had. Gordon straight up told Van to get it together and take the damn cart over to the right table. Well, Chef Ramsay wasn't done yet and decided to gather both Gene and Van to hash out their issues. It must have been quite a tense moment. JP came up with some hilarious excuses that left everyone baffled, which was definitely unexpected. Which barrier did What do you mean a language barrier? He's speaking English, you dick. I know, because he's from Texas. It's not every day you hear him say something like that. But then came the dramatic twist. Van had to swallow his pride and apologize to the table he messed up before he could think of serving the right one. After that, Van seemed to regain his composure and started dishing out the scampi app. But unfortunately, his luck took a nosedive when his shrimps didn't turn out well not once, but twice. I'm sorry. He's gonna yell at me here in a minute. 
What a disappointment. Just like me, Gene's patience was wearing thin, and he couldn't handle the drama unfolding before him. And just when he thought things couldn't get any crazier, Van decided to start running around in the dining room. Not exactly the best idea when customers are trying to enjoy their meal. I mean, basic manners seem to have gone out the window. JP, clearly frustrated, told Van to slow down with his Olympic sprint. But Van's comeback was pretty shocking. I'm going to explode, huh? I'm going to explode, my friend. He basically told Gene to buzz off and that nobody was going to boss him around. It was a total fail on Van's part. JP, not one to sit back and take the nonsense anymore, got right up in Van's face and demanded that he tune in. Listen to me! I cannot believe I'm seeing this. Listen to me! He's gonna and hit him. We have a problem here. It felt like the dude was about to punch Van. However, just in the nick of time, Gordon swooped in and took control of the situation. He whisked the two of them away to the pantry room in an effort to de-escalate the tension. Once there, JP tried to explain to Gordon that he was attempting to teach Van about respect in the dining room. However, Gordon wasn't convinced. I'm sorry, chef. He's not respecting this dining room, chef. What followed next was a shocking moment where Gordon threw some shade at JP, making him look small in comparison to the almighty grizzly. It was an unexpected turn of event, especially since JP was the maitre d'hotel. And even Van got involved for uh, some reason. If you ask me, it definitely added more complexity to the situation. Meanwhile, Gordon made sure to give both JP and Van a verbal smackdown, making it clear that it was time to get their act together and do their job. And you pay a little bit of respect. And if you do your job, and you do your job, we'll come together. Yep, he clearly laid down the law and left them to pick up the pieces. And of course, there is this moment from season 12 where Joseph's behavior took center stage. The dynamics and tension in the kitchen can truly make or break a team, and it seems like Joseph's actions had a significant impact on the blue team. At the beginning of the service, Joseph and Jim were determined to work together and give it their all. It's always great to see that kind of spirit and camaraderie. However, as soon as the service started, Joseph quickly shifted his focus to criticize his team members. If you're sitting there all night long with a meat thermometer on your arm, why are you not checking the chickens? He first targeted Tony, who was working at the fish station, and then called out Andy for inconsistent meat temperature. Joseph knew that using a thermometer would only provoke Gordon's wrath, which is why he thought that he should probably rely on his own instincts instead. In the midst of the chaos, when Kevin sent a raw halibut to the pass, Joseph stepped in to save the day. Let me do the fish, I'll show you how to cook halibut. I mean, despite his critical behavior, he was still capable of stepping up and taking control when necessary. However, the entire team was grappling with similar issues as everyone was trying to assert their authority. Five of you cooking fish, and it's still not coming out. Sorry, sir. But Gordon's frustration reached a breaking point leading him to do this. Shut it down. It must have been a tense moment for everyone involved, and Joseph too decided to share a piece of his mind. As the episode took a turn, Gordon lined up all the contestants to hear the nominations from each team for the night. And oh boy, let me tell you, things got really spicy in the kitchen when Gordon asked Joseph to name the first nominee from the blue team. Instead of just giving a straight answer like he should have, Joseph decided to be a smart jerk. A smart ass. I asked you to tell me. Can you believe that? But you know what? Gordon wasn't one to let things slide easily. He decided to give Joseph another chance, and so he picked Tony and Andy as the nominees this time around. Talk about a lucky break, right? However, Joseph couldn't help himself but take a cheeky jab at Tony. They belong there. Stand up, they know who they are. <laughs> And the next thing you know, instead of getting his act together and playing by the rules, Joseph went head to head with Gordon. He claimed that the team had made the decision together and didn't need anyone pressuring them. Seriously, this guy had an ego the size of Mount Everest. Meanwhile, Gordon wasn't about to tolerate this kind of behavior. He made sure Joseph understood the rules. The first nominee and why he's nominated. Is that f***ing clear? But guess what? Joseph just couldn't give a simple answer and kept complicating things. I mean, seriously, dude, why make it so difficult? I mean, everyone in the room was totally shocked by Joseph's outburst. It wasn't just rude, but also a major disrespect to the man who knows his way around a kitchen. But then things went from bad to worse when Joseph started mouthing off to his fellow contestants. And then, out of the blue, he did something that was absolutely uncalled for. You want a f***ing jacket? You want to talk some shit? Let's go step outside, motherfucker. I couldn't believe my eyes. 
I'm not sure what Joseph thought of himself, but Gordon had just the right response. I mean, contestants work so hard to earn a place in the kitchen and wear those prestigious chef jackets, but Joseph just slammed it to the ground like it meant nothing to him. You want a fucking jacket? You want to talk some shit? Let's go step outside, motherfucker. That's insane, right? But wait, because things were about to get crazier. Fucking fighting? Oh, wow. You're fucking rough. Do you think I'm scared? Huh? Joseph had the nerve to charge directly at Gordon like a raging bull ready to start a fight. Unbelievable. Thankfully, before things could escalate any further, something unexpected happened, and this prompted two huge security guards to step in to break things up. Now, we all know Gordon can handle himself just fine, but I guess it was all about following protocol and ensuring everyone's safety. Plus, who knew there were security guards stationed on the set? It's important to remember that physically fighting is strictly against both the contestants and Gordon's contract. There are rules in place, and the network and production sure don't want to get involved in any lawsuit. I mean, Fox could probably handle it just fine, but it would definitely hurt the show's reputation. Anyway, after that embarrassing display of emotions, there was no way Joseph could stay on the show. It was just too much drama and disrespect. And given how much of both the show sees on a good day, that's really saying something. It was time for him to pack his shit and hit the road. Good riddance. Gordon was so furious with Joseph's behavior that he even kicked Joseph's jacket out of the way as a final gesture to show who was really in charge. It was a clear message that Joseph's antics were not going to be tolerated. What a total disgrace and idiot, I tell you. I mean, all Gordon was trying to do was host a reality show and do his best. Best, and this guy almost pushed him into a fist fight. Crazy, right? If Joseph had any hopes of continuing his career as a chef and landing jobs at restaurants, well, it's safe to say that his chances took a serious hit after his behavior on the show. I mean, nobody wants to hire someone with that kind of reputation. Needless to say, this incident is one of the most intense moments in the show's history. Whether you're a fan or not, chances are you've heard about this close encounter Gordon had with a madman. It's just unforgettable. Surprisingly, after after getting kicked off Hell's Kitchen, Joseph went on to have a successful career as a chef. He worked as an executive chef and even became a part owner of the famous American Beauty Bistro in North Massapequa, New York. He also worked at Mitch and Tony's in Albertson and later became the executive chef at Uncle Jack's Steakhouse. Wow, talk about a turnaround. As for Joseph's personal life, he has been pretty tight-lipped about it. But one thing is for sure, the epic showdown between Gordon Ramsay and Joseph Tinnelly continues to be talked about even after 15 years. It's definitely left a lasting impression on fans and viewers alike. So that's a wrap on my pick of the times things got super physical on Hell's Kitchen. And if you think I missed out on any, make sure to get in the comments and who knows, I might feature your suggestion in my upcoming video. You could also leave me a message on my social media pages and please don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And hey, if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see the next one. It's even crazier.